Uri Slavkovsky sets yet another record, and Suzuki gets his 30th of the season. There is a lot of amazing stuff to discuss from the Habs' first three-game win streak of the season. Plus, we have to discuss Lane Hudson and another potential goal of the year candidate in the NCAA as he brings Boston University to the next round of the NCAA tournament. There's a lot of stuff, plus more, to discuss coming up on this episode of Habs Digest. And we're going to get into something interesting first, Jesse, and this actually has to do with mostly Caden Gooley, but also Mike Matheson in the Habs top D pairing. Now, Dom decision over at the Athletic posted an article discussing Moritz Sider and how Moritz Sider plays the most difficult minutes against the strongest offensive opponents in the entire NHL and his partner Jake Wallman is right at the top two saying how you know when you look at some defensive stats it actually drags guys like Sider and Wallman down just because of the quality of competition but who else do you see on this list well the next most difficult defensive pairing or at least most difficult offensive matchups for any defensive pairing in the NHL is Mike Matheson and Caden Gooley and if you just look at the Habs usage chart this is all from that same athletic article Gooley and Matheson have the hardest defensive shifts of any defensive pairing in the NHL outside of Sider and Wallman. And you can see Matheson, Gooley there, and for the forward, Slavkovsky, Caulfield, Suzuki, all in the easy offense, hard defense category. And as Dom goes on to say, every team has a pair being tasked with the toughest assignments each night, enough to drag their defensive rating down by a significant margin, a margin that's larger than the average of who they actually face. That makes for a sizable adjustment that's previously gone unaccounted for by my uh, model and many other similar ones. It's not the only adjustment that needs to be made. Who a player plays with also matters. But basically, Jesse, like guys like Gooley and Matheson, as evidenced in this article, I see so many people quote negative defensive metrics from Gooley or Matheson, whether it's on a player card or someone else. But the truth is, after some of the analysis done in this article, like these guys are actually playing way, way better than we could have anticipated. Yeah, that's it. It's like, and it totally explains that why the analytics for Caden Gooley aren't the best. But when you see the eye test, like he's affecting the game just at all levels. And of course, being so young and then to be tasked against the best players night after night and just the lion's share, you know, basically the ones that are being trusted basically all the time. It's just really amazing to see. And you have to feel like his play is going to improve so much once he just has a little bit more help, once he's maybe able to slide back to his natural side on, you know, on that first pairing, you know, going to the left-hand side there. But I think, Josh, that the same can be said, the same takeaway can be said for the offense of this team, for Nick Suzuki, for Cole Caulfield, you know, Slavkovsky is for sure. They're getting the line share against the best defenders from the other team. And when they get a little bit of support, that's going to really free them up in terms of matchups to really just produce even more. And then we're going to see the analytics follow, follow suit. So, of course, we know that Caden Gooley has such a bright future ahead of himself. For sure. And we know, too, that the Montreal Canadiens defense, like we have some great prospects to fill in. But right now, like the depth is good, but these guys are all still like learning so much in the NHL. Mm -hmm. And the same with the forwards is once you get that depth behind these players and you have the ability to give more difficult minutes to your other defensive pairings, trust them to take on some tougher matchups. Same thing with the forwards. These metrics are just going to go up and up. They're going to face lesser competition. Their numbers are going to go up. So it, all in all, it's a great sign for Gooley and Matheson, despite some of the negative defense even if it's true at times it's not necessarily as bad as it might appear but let's move on jesse to something else we got to talk quickly about lane hudson before discussing the habs game tonight which was a oh, phenomenal win versus the flyers but we got to talk about lane and i'm just going to show you the goal today if you didn't see this this is absolutely ridiculous we'll see ya. another toe drag goal for lane we're going to play it again one time for you pay close attention because you might miss it in the blink of an eye lane hudson toe drags around the defender for a phenomenal goal leading his team all right uh, no beat to beat all right he is team boston university of course beating rit in the first round of this ncaa tournament moving them on to the next round as lane hudson records a goal and an assist jesse lane hudson i mean he just keeps it going adding two block shots too something he doesn't do uh all that often but my goodness what a sick move second straight game with a toe drag goal what is there left to say this guy is just getting everyone across the nhl fan base is hyped for him to make that leap to north well to the professional leagues in North America. Because, of course, I guess he's already here. Right. Well, he wants to join the Montreal Canadiens. Just not yet. You know, he's in the Final Four, the Frozen Four. And he wants to keep winning, right? And kind of end his historic college career in style. I mean, why not? He's doing everything to kind of make that happen right now. Like, we saw a similar goal just the other day from mm -hmm. a more in the high slot where he does that toe drag to just that patented wrister. It seems like almost a toe drag is now starting to become 
that patented move mm-hmm. from Lane Hudson again. I love that. He made the goalie look so silly on that one, right? Now this time, showing off with the deke just to kind of finish. But again, just such quickness on this play. Like you said, right? If you blink, you're basically missing that play, you know, and obviously got the better of the goalie on that one for that exact reason. That was just a phenomenal play. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this as he continues um, this amazing play in this tournament. Oh, I mean, that, there's no doubt it's going to be, he's going to be the guy that everyone is going to be focused on, right? I mean, Lane Hudson has, of all the players left, well, he's one of the most talented. Of course, teammates with Macklin Celebrini, a guy who's probably going to go first overall this year, but uh, he is one of the most eye-catching players. As a defenseman doing what he does, the puck just sticks to his stick like a magnet. Unbelievable stuff. I'll show the goal one more time for you guys, just so we can all appreciate this, right? Oh my gosh, unbelievable. Can't wait to see what he has in store in the rest of this tournament, and hopefully for the Habs a bit later this season. Final thing, we got to talk about the game. I mean, there's so much going on, Jesse, but the big thing is that Uri Slavkovsky nicks Suzuki do it again uh we'll get into slash record in a second but as always feel free to pause take a look at the box score yourself Matheson with the two assists 25 minutes time on ice of course but then you look at the forwards a goal and assist for Nick Suzuki one assist for Uri Slavkovsky and it was a beauty cross crease to Nick Suzuki for the first goal of the game you see Armia and Evans pitching in with empty netters and Ullinen snapping a very long goal streak with a little rebound in front and Caden Primo despite well he had a shutout going for this whole game until the very end the Flyers managed to score after a couple minutes of an empty net I believe it was Owen Tippett who just squeaked one past but hey Caden Primo um and maybe him first Jesse before we get into Slavkovsky just wanted to give a shout out to him the crowd chanting his name again Primo Primo this guy is just a complete different animal when he plays at the Bell Center and I don't know what's gotten into him <laughs> he's just played amazing basically for the large part since really been given that backup that 1B role outright you know like the Montreal Canadiens we just got 16 shots on net tonight that wasn't a whole lot but he battled through right with those 29 saves Playing amazing tonight, you know, not just making those amazing saves, but again, showing that will to really win and to compete, which is so important in in today's, you know, NHL, right? You know, so amazing for him. And you got to feel like, you know, the whole team is so happy for him as well. Oh, they were. And you can see Savar Jack. I putting people to the ground if they dared to come anywhere near Primo. Awesome stuff from him. But the real story here, Slavkovsky and Suzuki. And as you guys know, we mentioned last video of players before their 20th birthday in any season. Slavkovsky set the record. Well, now there is no disputing anything of any player in their teenage season. Again, your age of your season is the age you are on January 31st of that season. So any player that didn't turn 20 before January 31st of their season, Slavkovsky now has the all-time record. 41 points surpasses Henri Richard for most points ever in an age 18 or 19 season for the Montreal Canadiens. Not only that, Jesse, again, he's in the midst of his second eight-plus game point streak, marking the ninth game tonight. And throughout the whole night, he looked like one of the most dominant forces on the team. He even had a drive to the net, like a Josh Anderson-esque, might I say, drive to the net that we've seen occasionally. But tonight, it felt like he was doing everything without hesitation. And he was just one of these dominant forces. I saw an interesting comment somewhere. I believe it was on Reddit. They said, like, hey, you know, imagine if we drafted Shane Wright first overall and we were watching Slavkovsky do this for the Seattle crack and not to put down Shane Wright I mean you never know what these development curves will look like if they're drafted to different teams but my gosh this guy is like is just purely a force at this point I I I just I'm so excited to see what happens next year now no right the nine game point streak continues this being his last game as a teenager he's turned in 20 this Saturday, he's mm-hmm. going right in front of our eyes, Josh. You know, it's just amazing to see. You know, but I really loved his words there. Baby slap <laughs> slaps a whole grown up. He's a big boy now, for sure. But, you know, I loved his words here. In the, yeah, for sure. Hitting the gym. But, you know, it's when he was asking the second, like going into the second period, like what's the game plan going against Philly? Because this was a big game for Philly. They're battling for their playoff lives here. They're giving it everything they had. He said, like, yeah, they're – they're going to forecheck, you know what I mean? But that doesn't change anything about what we're going to do. We're going to continue to play hard and we want to win, right? And just what an amazing attitude. I think, you know, just knowing that we have our own game plan and no matter what any other team brings to any night, if we just stick to what we do well and having that confidence and just that certainty that Slav has about that, I mean, 
that was just amazing to see again instrumental in this game tonight and i'm just wondering josh like do you think that cole caulfield's like starting to get jealous of the new bromance in town between slavzilla and suzuki right now uh you know what maybe he might just a little bit uh you know slav stealing some of that thunder hey but hey you know what i think some uh some friendly rivalry can be a good thing might want cole to get back on the score sheet a little bit more next season to rekindle that bromance with nick suzuki you know get up to that 30 40 goal mark and then he can be like hey nick look what i can do who knows there'll be a lot of stuff there but hey nick suzuki might start a bromance with himself because my goodness is he ever feeling himself right now phrasing i don't know anyway wait 30 goals jesse he's he's now at 30 goals 69 points on the season oh the 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 jokes write themselves but 72 games in this is the if you count alexander gal uh, yeah alex galchenyuk i don't know why i said alexander it's late i'm sorry alex galchenyuk i guess it is alexander if you count him as a center, yes, he was the last half center to get 30 goals in a season. I find it tough sometimes to, to say he was a center when he did that, is what it is. But if you don't count him, Nick Suzuki has the first 30 goal season by any Hab center since Pierre Turgeon in 1995-96, 28 years ago. Uh, 30 goals, Jesse, is something that we thought, yeah, maybe Nick Suzuki will peak around that 30 goal, 30-ish goal mark. But he has just improved and improved and improved. They showed a graphic during the game of his points per game, season by season. It's just going up and up and up, and I don't see him stopping anytime soon. No, it's bringing us to the good old days there, right? And But we really need that. Again, that center, it's like you need to build your team if you don't really have that number one center, right? It's really to, to have those cup aspirations, which we know with Montreal, that's what we're really going for year in, year out, right? But as he continues this, uh, you know, it's amazing to see he's definitely established himself as the number one center in this league. And you have to feel like he's just the guy that's going to just continue to improve, be a point per game type of guy, and even more so. But again, when you factor that into the defense, that is so valuable. Like, you know, the fact that he can do such great offense, but as we saw from that chart, earlier but then also be one of the best defensive players for this team at the same time it's really quite hard to measure of just how much that helps your team but again you have a leader that's setting the example of playing the game in the right way and again for the rest of your team to follow suit on the ice you need you need that leader there that's really paying attention to those details doing it right so you can really have this foundation for this young team for him to be doing this i mean this is just open up so many doors for the montreal canadians hey can you imagine if this guy turns into a 30 35 goal consistent you know 80 85 point guy that contract it already looks like a steal but to be a captain of the team with the cap going up with his current level of production at his age, my gosh, the, I mean, there's no one I'd rather have leading this team, Jesse. You're very right. He exhibits every single attribute that you could want from a leader of men, from a guy who's going to lead a team, hopefully to a Stanley Cup in the near future. What do you guys think? I mean, there's a ton of stuff that happened today, whether it's Lane Hudson, whether it's Nick Suzuki, or Uri Slavkovsky continuing to make history. We'd love to hear your thoughts on all of it. Leave your comments down below. But that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to push for 12,000 subs. So if you're still watching at this point and you haven't hit that button, do it now. You won't regret it. I'm your host, Josh Goss. My co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.